It's Sunday morning, and that means it is time for the Hook of the Week here at Black Bear Forge. Welcome back. Now, for this week's hook, I thought I would experiment more with a decorative finial on the end than worry too much about what the finished hook looks like. We will certainly make a finished hook, but what I really want to do is take a closer look at our teardrop punches we made the other day and see how we might use these to uh, create a nice decorative finial on the end of a hook. And I think to do that, I'm going to start with this piece of half inch square bar. That's roughly 13 millimeter square bar. Don't know how much of this I'm going to use. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to flare the end out so I've got room to get all three of our stamps in so I can make a nice decorative imprint. And then I'm going to take a look at that and see what shape I think the profile wants to be. So we'll let it cool and maybe sketch on it with a silver pencil and decide something and then cut that out. Then we'll worry a little bit more about the hook. Or perhaps I'll draw the hook end out and do most of that and then cut it out. That might make more sense while it's hot. Go ahead and do the hook and then I'm less likely to mess up the finial. But in any case, this is mostly about seeing what these will do and what kind of shapes we can do and what other techniques we can put in there to make all of this something really interesting. Waiting for the forge to get hot always gives me time to second guess my original plan and think of maybe a better way to do this. So we'll draw out the material for the hook, cut it off, forge the finial, and then at the very end we will actually shape the hook. I think what I want to do is just draw it out and let it flare some. I kind of like that look in a hook. make a fairly long taper out of that just so I've got plenty of room for a hook and it's not too short and stubby of a hook. As I do this sometimes this curves which means I'm putting more effort over here so if that happens I just tip my hammer over and curve it back the other way. Just cleaning that up and knocking the sharp edges off. Then I'll cut it off back up in here and that should leave us enough to spread out widthwise to make a interesting little finial out of. Right about there I think looks good. Now we could do half face blows at the edge of the anvil and create an offset to spread this, but I'm not sure that's what I want in the finished hook. So I'm just going to do a spread this and let it taper into the spread. I hope that makes sense. I'm just using the cross peen here.
I think that's all we need at the moment. Let's go ahead and punch a couple of holes in here so we don't have to do that later either. This is a fairly skinny punch so it won't be too big a hole. It also means the punch will overheat in half inch bar. It's a fair thickness of bar to go through for a skinny punch like this, but I think we can do it. Keep cooling it in water. Let me find the little target mark on the opposite side so we can line that back up. And hope that we can shear it out. There we go. Let's do two holes like that. All right, we've got holes in there. We've got a place for our decorative stamping, so we're going to go and do that next. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to run one centered here, and then I'm going to see what I like on these others, whether they go up or down from there, and figure out how far out to take them. I want to try and use the entire punch here so my angle will be dictated by that so it's not hanging over the edge and then we'll let it cool and figure out how we want to trim that to enhance that pattern there And I'm tipping this forward so I get a nice deep imprint on the fatter end. I think that's more dramatic than if you try to go straight down, especially since it's taper. So I want to be parallel to my face there more than anything. And this will go on that side. Right there. Francis Whitaker used to say, if you're going to make a mark, make it deep enough for people to see it. And you want to match this on the other side. This really shows you if you got your three teardrop punches pretty evenly shaped, and that looks pretty good. So there we are with the imprints. So now the next question is what I want that finial profile to be. So we're going to take this to the bench. We're going to look at it. We'll do a little sawing, filing, chiseling, whatever it takes to create whatever I come up with there.
blade's missing a few teeth. I think it's time to replace it. Somebody remind me before the next video. Now that just removes the vast majority of the material and leaves less filing to be done. This is a place that a filing vise is really handy because you can see the work a lot better when it's at an angle like this. Plus it sort of helps you impart a nice bevel as you work. Files fairly sharp, this goes pretty quickly. If you're trying to do the bevel, filing straight across establishes the bevel, but if you're profiling the whole thing, you've got to file it the angle. Alright, I think that's what I saw in my mind. Quick touch mark. A little bit of a wire brushing there. Let's turn it around and make a hook. A little sharp corner there I'm going to knock down. And I'm just going to start with a simple little scrolled in, not real tight. It's something like that, I think. Typically those start off going away from the front of the hook so that when you bend it up it's back to the front again. I'll just bend it around the hook jig here. Pretty happy with that. It's the last little wire brushing and inspect it to see if you need to fix anything. Now I'm going to let this cool and I'm going to put my usual paste wax finish on it but then I'm going to come back and sand off this like we did the other day and use the linseed oil and beeswax finish up here just to highlight that top section a little bit make it look a little more interesting. Now this is the same technique that we looked at in the last video on forging a leaf. It's just a quick sanding it's just going over it with some oh, 80 to 150 grit sandpaper to take the high spots off and that just leaves some highlights get through the scale there and then maybe go to some 220 sandpaper and then a little scotch bright just to buff it up and I think that really enhances that. Also helps you see where you could have filed a little bit better. And certainly if I wasn't doing this for a video, I would probably put a little bit more time into it. But I'm not sure if you guys want to watch me put that much extra time into it. But you can always spend more time fiddling with stuff, trying to get it just right. And depending on what you're doing, it's absolutely worth it. This is kind of a test piece on a concept, so I'm not sure that it matters. It's also something that may or may not ever go to a customer. I suppose I'll probably put it on Etsy. So if any of you guys are looking for a hook like this or just want a little memento of the show, you can look there for it. We'll use this same linseed oil and beeswax finish that can go on cold. I think it's actually about a third beeswax, a third linseed oil, and a third mineral spirits. 
I'd have to go back and watch the video in which we made it. And I'll link to that video right up here in the corner. So if you're interested in the exact formula, I'm pretty sure it's listed in that video. So that's our finished hook. I really like the idea, I like the concept, I think I like the finial. The only thing that I would probably like better if it was a little skinnier right through here to make this in more dramatic. Or maybe use bigger punches and draw that out a lot more for this size material. And I don't know that I see this as being something that you would use on a hook very often, but I think that would make a great hinge finial. It would make a really good finial for cabinet pull handles or door handles, something like that. And probably a lot of other places you could use that idea, scale it up, scale it down, much heavier material, bigger punches, whatever you need to do to satisfy the project at hand. But I think there are a lot of places you could apply a very similar approach. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, make sure you wash your hands regularly, and wear your safety glasses. We'll see you later.